success, the attainment of fame, wealth, and social status. In our society, this is the all-accepted definition given to us by Oxford Dictionary. And this is me, meditating on a lake in Sweden with my children in one of the happiest moments of my life. After 35 years of love of physics and 30 years of Zen meditation. So how come that this moment surpasses all the successes I had in my career as a PhD in physics, a flourishing career in several large multinationals, and being, having the privilege to be at the forefront of the European AI policy? Does this definition really give us what we truly think about success? So what if we were to rewrite it and introduce a different definition of success? The fulfillment of meaning in life through harmony, purpose, and compassion. It might feel a bit strange or even uncomfortable, and you might even say, well, what does this have to do and with artificial intelligence anyhow? So let's try in the next 10, 15 minutes together to explore this and how artificial intelligence can support this definition of success. And let's have a look at the dimensions that, when fulfilled, can make us happy and successful according to this definition. By having the basic needs to survive, by feeling at ease, through safety, good health, security, and freedom, by having connection with our dear ones and with the people and the world around us, by having the privilege to grow, to reach our full potential, and finally, letting go and find happiness to go beyond ourselves. So what if we had a tool to accomplish this. And we do have this tool. And this tool is artificial intelligence. So before we go to see why this is, let's see where we are now. How do we see artificial intelligence? The overwhelming opinions about artificial intelligence are driven by fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety of a science fiction scenario where almost by tomorrow we are beyond the singularity event and the robots are taking over. Fear of losing our jobs. And ultimately, that we humans become irrelevant. So let's take these fears and anxiety one by one and have a look at how far we are. So the science fiction scenario first. Let's see how close it is to our reality. And let's take a simple example, right? You show a picture of a dog to a child, and you show another picture of a dog to a child. Well, the third time you show it a third picture of a dog, he will say, well, this is a dog. Now, let's try to do the same with an advanced AI algorithm. To train your AI algorithm, a deep learning algorithm, you will need about 1.2 million images to get a decent answer with high probability that this is a dog. So, well, you will say, yeah, but surely with this computing power that we have at our disposal, this would be easily solved, right? All right, then let's move on to a more complicated topic, common sense. If I'm doing this, you would say, ah, he misplaced his phone, or he lost his key, or the microphone doesn't work. An AI algorithm will look at me and say, well, this is a human with erratic movements. <laughs> and here's another one that I truly enjoy. A data set of cars with spots. 
So you show this data set to people, and all the humans invariably will say, well, this is a car with spots. Now let's take the same set of data with spotted cars and put it through an AI medical diagnostic algorithm. <laughs> what do you think? It will always give you measles. <laughs> So obviously, the science fiction scenario is really still very far away from us. So how about the jobs? What if, thanks to AI, for every job that AI replaces, we will get 3.8 more jobs in the place, as the study of Agoria in 2018 showed? And what if these jobs will enable a partnership between human and AI? For instance, AI can fill in all the documents, all the forms, all the Excel files that the nurses and doctors need to fill in every day, saving up up to 80% of their time, such that they can, have, they can dedicate themselves to the job they truly love, helping patients. And now the ultimate questions. Will we become irrelevant? And let's have a look at the simple graph. F evolution through time. Our thinking grows linearly through time, whereas technology grows exponentially. So until a few years ago, we could understand technology. The bottom-up push was working very well. The companies were innovative. They were creating products. They were putting them on the market. We could understand those products. We could even identify with them. And we bought them. But now is not the case anymore. Now we cannot keep up with technology. Now we cannot keep up with science and technology innovations that we have. And there is a big gap now between where science and technology is and our thinking and our understanding of it. It's called the technology gap. So we are living in a paradox where science and technology is all around us. It's fully embedded in our lives. Look in, our po in your pockets of the smartphone. But our understanding of it is very far away. So what do we do about it? How do we bridge the gap? Well, you can say, we can invest more in technology jobs. And surely, this will raise our level of understanding. We will have our thinking at a, a higher level. But still, the thinking will still grow linearly. Well, we can change the curricula in schools and in universities. We can reskill our workforce. Even more, we can incentivize to get more students in STEM. Sure, all these little things help, and indeed we get to a higher level of understanding. But our thinking will still remain linearly in time. And this technology gap is still increasing. So what can we do about it? Moreover, on top of this, we are thinking in silos. The government, the finance world, the tech world, education, and you can add many more. Apart from a few examples, we hardly work together to co-create our future. Whereas the rise of artificial intelligence tells us exactly the opposite. We have to break the silos. We have to fully cooperate to create a sustainable future. So can we do this? Do we have a common language? Do we have a universal language? that transcends all the silos, that transcends our backgrounds, our beliefs, our countries where we come from. It's nice to look for one. And some of the people in Europe a few years ago proposed that ethics is that common language. Now let's see. Is ethics in Europe the same as in other parts of the world? One. Can an AI algorithm comprehend all the multifaceted aspects of ethics? Can we write an AI algorithm that can deal with ethical decisions where the answer is hardly ever 
binary. Hardly ever yes or no, right or wrong. So obviously, the answer is no to this. And the humans still have to make the ethical decision. But then, that's great. Then human centricity is our common language. We should always have a human taking the decisions. But if you look at all the AI applications, all the domains where AI is present, do we always have to be reductionistic and say we always need a human to take decisions? We already have the answer. The answer is no. So what's left? Let's think big. The common language is what is good for our society. But do we have a global understanding of what is good for all the societies around the world? Just look at the recent events. You know the answer is no. So what if we did have a common language? A common language that will enable us to fulfill our meaning in life and to be happy going beyond ourselves and be successful according to the, the new definition. And this language exists, and it's compassion. So what are our choices now? Well, the obvious choice is to switch off. You know, technology gap and stuff. We switch off, we opt out, we don't understand anyhow where science and technology goes to, and why bother? Or, for the geeks and techies among us, we say AI is the goal, and data is the truth. Or, we can choose the middle path, the middle path of compassion that enables a true partnership between human and AI. So can we do this? I'm not trying to propose utopia here. What I'm proposing is something that we can start doing now and has the potential to be transformational for us and for the world around us. And the first thing we should do is start with ourselves. Acknowledge and be aware of the gap, technology gap or any other gap, I leave it up to you. But then accept the gap, accept that the gap exists, and look at ourselves self-compassionately. And at the same time, rejoice in our talents and gifts, and reach out to others that can teach us about all the other stuff that is out there. And in a world that is full of science and technology around us, be brave and step into a state of wonder to discover yet the unknown things that are relevant for our being. And then expand our circle of compassion. With the same compassionate approach, let's go to our dear ones, let's go to our family, our colleagues, our friends, our not-so-friendly neighbor, and even the guy who cut you off in traffic this morning. And the third step, let's start teaching compassion in schools, along with STEM. And for the ones among us that they are privileged enough to be able to transform the way things are done, whether it's in business or governments or any other domain, let's manifest our compassionate being and implement a transformation and we will see a next level of humanity. And if it is one thought I want to leave you with, is when in doubt, act with compassion. Thank you. <laughs>